uh, it came out this week, the New York Times did a whole deep dive into this, that there were FBI informants in the Proud Boys and actually at the Capitol on January 6th. I'm going to summarize the reporting here. They said the FBI had as many as eight informants inside the far-right Proud Boys in the months surrounding the storming of the Capitol on January 6th. And this is according to recent court papers. The existence of the informants came to light over the past few days in a flurry of veiled court filings uh, filed by defense lawyers for five members of the Proud Boys who are set to go on trial next month on seditious conspiracy charges connected to the Capitol attack. In the paper, some of which were heavily redacted, naturally, the lawyers claimed that some of the information the confidential sources had provided to the government was favorable to their efforts to defend their client against sedition charges and was improperly withheld by prosecutors until several days ago. Shocker. Uh, they said because all of the material remains under a highly restrictive protective order, it is not possible to know what the informants told the government about the Proud Boys' role in the Capitol attack. And they say the dispute about the informants and the Proud Boys came on the heels of revelations that the FBI also had a well-placed source in the inner circle of Stuart Rhodes, the leader of the Oath Keepers Militia, which is another far right group that took part in the Capitol attacks. So Hannah, I have questions. You know, this sounds, this whole, the FBI did Jan 6 is what, like your super mega uh, QAnon loving Trump uncle will say at Thanksgiving, but... Uh, I mean, they didn't literally engineer the whole thing and plan it like, like these people would say. But the fact that they had informants in all of these groups ahead of time, I, I'm like, well, why didn't they stop it? They could have prevented it if they knew this was going to happen. Wh whatever, were they egging them on? Like, why wouldn't they have put a stop to the crime before it actually happened if they had informants in the inner circles of the people doing this? And yet... It was it was a really bad event. It was a bad day for the country, um, but it's crazy to me that they they seem to have known about this and been plugged into these circles and done nothing about it. Which, I mean, unfortunately, that that's a tale as old as time. Our intelligence agencies failing to stop things, but how, how even the New York Times is admitting this and reporting this now. This is not some kooky conspiracy. Like this is reality, and I, I hope there's going to be a reckoning. Um, there won't be, but so there's <laughs> one of two things that went down, right? So you either have a situation where the FBI had informants that were in the Proud Boys and the Proud Boys were planning this out and it was their intention to storm the Capitol on January 6th and overthrow the election, which is, by the way, what the federal government is trying to argue in court. And in order to do that, in order to get the charges they want to prove seditious conspiracy, prosecutors have to show that the defendants knowingly entered into an agreement to use force to stop the lawful transfer of the power after the 2020 election. So in order to win the government's case, they have to prove that this was a, a full plot to show up on January 6th, storm the Capitol, and overthrow the election. But if that's true, if that government's case is true, that means the informants knew about it, and why were they not able to stop it? Right? That's the main question. Or the other the other situation is that they didn't have a plot, didn't have a plan, and then it becomes a question of like, did it occur naturally or did the informants egg them on and maybe helped them to get to that level? Because we've seen other cases throughout the U.S. government's history where these kind of things have occurred. You have in recent history, the Gretchen Whitner kidnapping plot, which I think you are probably familiar with, Brad, but this is the governor of Michigan. Uh, and I think back in 2020, there was a conspiracy plot to kidnap her. But as it started unraveling, it came to be very clear that within the group of three men that were supposedly going to do this, one of them was an FBI informant and seems to have been egging things on and escalating things. You also saw this happen back in um, the 50s and 60s with the Black Panthers, where you had FBI informants who helped um, get to the basic assassination of Fred Hampton and ultimately killed themselves later on, but were very participative of that. And it's, it's, it's a question of what happens behind closed doors because you and I can't say for sure that the FBI was making things worse or creating terrorists by these activities. Yeah, we don't um, know. But I think... We don't know, but questions need to be asked. The same thing is true with Ross Albright. You know, there's really serious questions around his case, whether the FBI kind of framed him and set him up online with the Silk Road takedown. Uh, there's another instance that I think is crazy. Edward Snowden reports in his book from when he was at the CIA. And this is what kind of turned him against the intelligence community. His initial sort of this is goes too far. But there was this Swiss banker that they wanted to have as an informant. They wanted to make him give them information and he wasn't playing ball. And so they basically set him up to get drunk and drive home and get a, a DUI that they then bailed him out of so that he had to participate in and work with them. So like they do these kinds of shady things and orchestrate these sorts of things all the time behind the scenes. And I think it's time we start really looking into this. I, I did some research just to see like 
um, how much we actually know around that. And it's it's pretty murky, but I did find this interesting. There's a, Sh a Schuster Institute senior fellow named Trevor Aronson who's been analyzing more than 500 federal terrorism prosecutions over 10 years. And he says that he found reason to question whether U.S. law enforcement is actually creating the very enemy that they claim to be fighting. Uh, he found that the FBI has, under the guise of engaging in counterterrorism since 9-11, built a network of more than 15,000 informants who infiltrate Muslim communities and ferret out quote quote would-be terrorists. The Bureau then provides the means necessary for these would-be terrorists to move forward with a terrorist plot, in some cases even planting specific ideas for attacks. And he says the evidence suggests some of those under FBI scrutiny did not have the capacity for terrorism were it not for FBI undercover agents providing the means, including weapons and logistical support. And that's the kind of questions I want to have answered because, you know, if you are talking to somebody who says, I want to overthrow the government, and then the FBI informant's like, oh, really? Well, here's an, here's an idea of how we could do it. Or maybe we should, you know, here's, here's how you can get some guns to do this. Like, how complicit are these agencies in these actual events? I think it's a very serious question that needs to be answered. It is, and it's just bonkers town to me that the, they even do these kinds of things uh, because there's a line where that's entrapment so beyond a certain point, and there's also a line where it's like they're creating more problems than they're solving in a lot of these areas. I don't know. I just I find it so nuts, and just this stuff, too, feeds the conspiracy theories. Like, I try to be very careful about conspiracies and only going where there's confirmed facts, but I can see why some people, when they find out all of this shady, duplicit, uh, duplicitous stuff that our government's doing, go down these rabbit holes, I can see why people are, are drawn into that. I really can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. And honestly, like, we spend billions of dollars a year on these counterterrorism and, and homeland security agencies. And I want to know what we're getting in return. Like, are they actually stopping real threats or are they out there egging them on and creating them or overblowing how many of them are actually there? These are serious questions that need to be asked. This, this kind of activity goes back decades. Like I said, all the way back to the 50s and 60s, we know they were doing these kinds of things. And I think that we've seen enough in recent years, especially from the FBI, about corruption that is uh, internal there and how they even, you know, use their power to politically target people like moms at school board meetings. So we really need to start having a lot more transparency and accountability when it comes to the intelligence community at large. But I think this is a total kneecap to the prosecution for January 6th. Either way, yeah. they look really bad.